All right, so you know a little bit about the normal distribution. And let's say for argument's sake, we have this normal distribution, and it represents 100,000 teachers. And it's a, a little survey we gave them, and the mean score was 75, which indicates pretty positive attitudes towards computers, but not not incredibly positive attitudes. Let's just pretend that's the case. And we can see that there's a standard deviation here and then it's 75 minus 60 which is 15. All right. So this is our normal distribution with a lot of teachers. Unfortunately when we actually do research we can't really um, sample 100,000 teachers. They probably wouldn't participate in our study. And usually we like to have a sample size of, well, n uh, is greater than or equal to 30. All right. And what we want to do is hope that that 30 represents this population here. Uh, but what if we happen to, you know, you, 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 you just you sampled your friends. And so uh, say you're not positive about technology and your friends might fall in this region here, you know, somewhere in there. So your little normal distribution, if you did it, would look something like this with perhaps a mean score of say 50 and then maybe it's a little tighter here, you know, it's 55 and 45 and 60 here for two standard deviations and uh, 40. Okay, and so this is my 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 sample of 30 teachers, but it's not so representative of the total population, and that's unfortunate, isn't it? Because uh, we might have a study and say, well, we surveyed uh, 30 teachers, and these are their attitudes uh, towards computers, and they're really not very positive, and so we you know might need to do something about that. So um, you have to be careful about your sampling. Sampling the greater the n, um, the, the the closer it is going to be to this actual population. So if we surveyed, for example, oh well, let's say n equals to maybe two hundred teachers. All right, the chances are are our sample population actually would be a little bit more representative. So we might get some results like um, instead of these values here, right, um, they may be a little bit more representative of the total population. Maybe we have, oh, let's say, maybe it's more like 60, 65 here and uh, 75 and 55 for the one standard deviation. I'm just making up some figures here. All right, and then that might be more representative of, well, it's closer, isn't it? And it probably will get closer and, and as our n increases, but so we have to pick an appropriate n. So when you're assessing a study, it's important for you to look at one sample size, okay? And you want to make sure that n is is over uh, 30, but hopefully somewhere you would like to see it in the hundreds or, or somewhere of that nature to be a little more confident that the sample size is, is uh, representative of the normal distribution. The other thing you want to look at is whether the sample was random or one of convenience. It usually is one of convenience. And then you want to look at whether enough information is given of the context. So perhaps it's more representative of math teachers in a rural area, okay? That might be different. Maybe math and science teachers are more pro-technology pro and uh, history and uh, English teachers may be uh, not as enthusiastic. So you, you have to take a look at that context, okay? The last thing you want to do is when you see the mean, all right, take a look at that standard deviation. All right, so say, let's just go up here for, for argument's sake, our mean was 75, but our standard deviation was 75 and a range, look at the range from 1 to 100, 
But our standard deviation was, um, oh, I don't know, let's say it was uh, uh, 25. Well, that's a pretty wide range, you know, and, and so we would think, wow, those scores are really varying and um, may or may not, um, they may or may not be representative of the, of the total population. If you see a huge standard deviation compared to the size here, that's like one third of the total here, uh, you, you might be a little wary of whether this sample is a good representation of of the normal population. And so uh, I forgot to write sample down here. So this is the sample population. We always have to sample things because we can't look at 100,000 teachers. And we want to make sure that our sample is representative, can say something about the normal distribution. And so that's the difference between sample and normal distribution. And uh, those are the things that you need to look at here to, um, to check out whether you think that the, the findings are representative of the normal population.